starts to be you. Why is it that some among us manage to live meaningful and inspired lives while others are trapped in the rat race? Pick an era in history and you'll find a handful of people across industries and continents who challenge the status quo. But for most of us, responsibilities, self-doubt, and the daily grind can make us feel trapped. We get worn down and burnt out and start to lose faith in our vision for the future. We begin to think that maybe there is no real path beyond sheer luck to fulfillment and financial stability. I've always been fascinated with learning about how others buck the norm. Are there patterns to success and fulfillment that the masses are missing? Is genius really what you think it is? Is genius something we all can achieve? And if so, what leads to genius? How do we speed up progress in business or in life? Can serendipity be engineered? Can luck be manufactured? Can convention be defied? Can ordinary people find genius? Join me as I uncover the process, the insights, the story behind ordinary people's stroke of genius. This is the untold story of ordinary people with genius ideas. Our next guest built a business empowering women to become lady ballers, and it all began with one tweet. Now, they've built a community of over 290,000 athletes, and they've been sponsored by Nike, Puma, and Adidas. Today, they have their own merchandise, book, and podcast. They haven't just created their own business. They've actually grown the audience for women's soccer games. Please welcome Carly, Shannon, and Alana from Soccer Girl Props. So welcome to the show, guys. So I'm super excited to share your story. Let's jump right into it. Um, so I wanted to start by asking you guys how you got the idea for Soccer Girl Props. Carly. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first of all, thank you so much yeah. for having us. Um, but yeah, it was it's a very unconventional story. I We were playing soccer at Fairfield University in 2011, and we were during preseason, like in between the first and second session of our day, and we were exhausted. We had bone bruises, we had ice bags all over us, we had tan lines. So it was during the time when Twitter was starting to get big, and we were just joking around about hashtag soccer girl probs we were having that day. Mm -hmm. um, so we decided to just make the Twitter account, and before we knew it, like after a week, we had a following growing and we continued to do it. And it kind of just like was spur of the moment and just an authentic thing that we did. We never had the idea of doing it, it just kind of like happened. It started as a simple tweet and now it's an international brand, Soccer Girl Problems. Well, a small business in Fairfield that started out as a joke with some players on the Fairfield University women's soccer team is no longer anything to laugh at. News 12 Connecticut's Ted Copy sat down with the three young founders of Soccer Girl Problems, which is about to go international. So I, I remember you guys were telling me um, earlier when we were talking um, that you started off with, you know, Twitter. And then from Twitter, you went to, you know, making videos. Um, and then, so how did that happen exactly? I think we just always listen to our fans. And I mean, first they were followers, they became our fans. Yeah. But they kept tweeting at us to make a YouTube video. And that was when Shit Boyfriend Say, Shit Girlfriend Say was going viral. So then we made a Shit Soccer Girl Say. So we took an iPad and like ran around <laughs> campus filming and everyone was like looking at us like wondering what we were doing. Um, and then we put the video up and we hit a million views in a day, right? Yeah. That's yeah, we, I remember waking up and I think you texted us and you were like, guys, you're not going to do this. Yeah. And I was like, every, I was like why don't all my aunts and uncles yeah. know yeah. about this yeah. video? Yeah. Friends that I hadn't heard from for <laughs> years were texting. Yeah, tagging yeah. us on really? Facebook, yeah. texting okay. us, and we were just like, holy crap, our video was, was seen by the entire soccer community. Their first video has been seen over a million times all over the world, and they have made many since, all the while gaining unexpected fame. Women on the U.S. national team recognized them. In fact, at a recent game involving the national team, it was the Fairfield players mobbed with girls wanting their picture. Yeah. We were really just cracking ourselves up at the time. Like, it was just for self-entertainment purposes yeah. and like, yeah. how to make it through preseason, like staying sane throughout the whole process. So it's funny that other people ended up relating to it yeah. the way that we did too. <laughs> this is a joke. Yeah, no, that's like that's amazing. 
So then um, from like making the videos, what was your next step? So we made the videos that following a couple months after we created the Twitter account and then Alana had graduated, right? Yeah, we couldn't and even it, do mm-hmm. anything initially because of NCAA yeah. rules, but then because I'm a little older than them, I ended up graduating first and then we were like, all right, what could be the next step for this? And everyone wanted t-shirts and they want like just sayings from that initial initial video like I can't I have soccer and most of the things we do for the game we love I own more cleats, I own more and, cleats heels. and heels yeah um and they just wanted them on a t-shirt so we made the <laughs> just the most plain t-shirts you could they were bright t-shirts but like plain text that had like tweets on them basically yeah with a sketchy website that I don't even know <laughs> how anyone ever trusted to put their credit card information into it uh but we decided to drop t-shirts and the, the night we dropped them I guess the people just we're waiting for them from yeah. us. So as soon as wow. we dropped them, it, like crashed the whole website because we were not prepared for. I thought maybe thirty people would buy one <laughs> over a month, and it was really like, wow. It crashed yeah. the whole website. Yeah, and it was like hundreds in a night that bought the shirt. So I think at that point we really realized that these were people that were feeling connected to something and wanted to be a part of something bigger. So gotcha. that was a big wake up call for me mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. Wow. But also, like, I think it's like really impressive that you guys went from, you know, shooting video to actually taking action and like listening to the feedback of your followers and like actually creating t-shirts. How did you learn about like t-shirt design? And tell me a little bit more about the process. <laughs> um, well, it's funny because my mom, like growing up was always the mom that made the apparel for the schools. Oh, okay, okay. For, like, you know, in high school when you get, like, right. high school sweatshirt and stuff like that. So she had a screen printer that she always used. So um, we just placed an order with her for the shirts. And I we placed them oh. before we even had the shirts, yeah. which was nice. So <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it was maybe an initial investment of $1,000. But okay. then the moment we made it live, all, we sold out of the shirts and more. So we were wow. cash flow positive from that moment, which we were very fortunate to be. There was no, like having to dig out of the investment that you put into it, which was nice. And now Soccer Girl Problems is a bona fide business. It's a trademark on a growing apparel line. Requests come in from Australia, Ireland, Canada. So it's so crazy looking back at our old logo, and then at one point I drew something, and we just smacked it on there. We were like, yeah, yeah sure. Let's <laughs> just throw it on there. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I mean, like, that's like a, a big uh, leap of faith that you guys took. So I think, I mean, that right there, I think, is like the difference between what you know, some other people would do versus you guys. Um, so, so after you guys actually made the t-shirt designs and it sold out, what was your next step from there? <laughs> really learning <laughs> how to not drown in what had just happened. What started out as funny YouTube videos and tweets by members of the Fairfield University women's soccer team has turned into a business doing hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales. There was a lot of, then it was like, all right, wasn't the best thing but like we put a shirt out before even thinking about what was the process for us to ship all these out you know like how are we going to what were we going to package them in <laughs> yeah. what system were we going to use to print yeah ship. we used what to go to the to like post office and individually weigh them and they would put the label on and it took hours yeah, like they, wow they would it open the so post crazy. office early for me at five <laughs> for me to bring all these packages there for them to and one woman would individually scan them all because we yeah. just didn't even know like know yet that, that there could be a system you could do online shipping the labels could print at home for you like that took us years too years oh it's dropped them off <laughs> for years yeah. Yeah. and your garage was completely stacked Wow, it was yeah. like, like floor to ceiling. Oh my god, yeah. I have a picture of it. <laughs> so, when we finally graduated, it was 2014. Fairfield had an entrepreneurship mentorship program, and our um, somebody had come in to film us. And the cameraman actually said, You guys should join this entrepreneurship program that Fairfield's hosting. So, we did that, and it wasn't until then that we were like, Okay, what is our mission statement? What is our logo? Let's redo our website. Yeah. Like, let's figure out what the heck is going on. You yeah, know? and make it yeah. a full-time job like exactly. we never actually I don't think sat down and said like we're gonna do this like, I know yeah. in. <laughs> we were like, and then we kind of got into the program we're like all right we're doing this <laughs> for, we're doing for this. Real. So that's when like your mindset changed I that, think so yeah, yeah. Okay. and then we moved in together and kind of yeah. just went from there my name is Alana Locast my name is Carly Byer I'm Shannon Fay, and we're Sock Girl Props because most people like get their business proposal or their business plan down and they establish what they need to establish and they learn the basics of what they have to do and then they try and grow from there and for us we always say we started a business backwards and we started with this huge viral following yeah. and then it was a matter of actually harnessing that down so it wasn't just a viral thing that fizzed out mm-hmm. so we really had to go back and learn all the basis of business and none of us were business majors so 
What were that everything? <laughs> what were your majors in um, Fairfield? Fairfield? Uh, mine was very general communications and minor in studio art. Okay. I yeah. was communications and television and film. Okay. Uh, okay. And I was biology pre med, so. Oh, okay. Wow, yeah. <laughs> there you so, go. It's so very different. <laughs> a lot of cross yes. <laughs> um, yeah. so, so, then, like, what other sorts of skills did you guys learn? Um, and was it the fuel program, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it was fame at the time, right? Time. But yeah. yeah, I think it's fuel now. Um, we learned yeah, everything. Yeah, well, the first thing I th I'm thinking of is we learned how to run an inventory system. Oh yeah, okay. we learned oh, yeah, how yeah, to yeah, ship yeah. things Important. like properly. <laughs> like okay, like the structure of our company was truly like formed yeah. there, yeah. and okay. like that was huge. I thought. Yeah, yes. and I think it was the first time we were working together, so we kind of figured out all of our strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and who wanted to do what. Okay. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we, we and yeah. we had we had um mentors who were. Professors at Fairfield who were all like very helpful too. So yeah, interesting. So tell me a little bit more about your your mentors. Like what specific things that they help you with? Um, what oh did you gosh. learn from them? Oh everything. Great. <laughs> I know literally yeah. everything. We would sit down and have a conversation for a few hours, and then be like exhausted, like mentally drained mm -hmm. after, because yeah. they would ask us the hard questions that we never thought about. Yeah. But what was um. What was his name? Chris Huntley, John, oh, no. John Neal. John Michael Neal. Thompson. So we had never even thought about how like marketing and advertising works, and he just like opened the doors for that. Okay. And Chris Huntley, who's like our uncle slash dad, dad. He's like, what's your way? What are you, how are you going to like affect <laughs> people and influence people through this? And it's funny, and then Mike McDonald was very yeah. numbers oriented and was like, you need this, you're going to ask plan. them partnerships, this is what you have to ask for, this is how mm -hmm. you're going to ask, how you're going to value yourself. So. It was really great, and they were not any professors that I had while I was at Fifth yeah. at all. But so it was you like met them through that program. Yeah, yeah. but it was yeah. literally like taking school all over all again over. with them. <laughs> yeah, I thought too it was so amazing because like even if they didn't know the answer, they would connect you with five people who who yeah. would, and everyone like in the alumni community is so giving. Like mm -hmm. yeah. they're so willing to spend five minutes of their time to like shoot you back an email, you know. And I just feel like a lot of people like that. We always say the advice we would give to people is pick people's brains and just like yep. shoot them an email like Definitely. people are so willing to help you yeah no it's, yeah. it's true yeah no I mean not always true for everyone but at the same time <laughs> yeah. you know it's it's great to, like you guys had access to those professors mm -hmm. um, so and then so tell me what happened after the program you guys moved to New York City or I think in the summer um, the, the World oh, Cup wait, was happening yeah. right so so what <laughs> happened well, we were we were hoping that we would be able to go to one or two games maybe in Montreal because it was in Canada uh -huh. um, that summer, and <laughs> we were looking into like renting an RV and what it would cost to get there, and we didn't have like a ton of money at the time, so we're like, how are we going to make this work, and who's going to do our shipping? <laughs> and then um, Kick TV, Copa ninety, they're a soccer um, channel. They reached out to us and asked us to come in for a meeting. I think originally, no, like, I think oh, originally like, it was on the phone. Yeah, and then, and oh, like, and then we went into the meeting. I thought it was yeah, okay. yeah, it was fun. Wait, first. so Copa ninety, tell tell um, everybody who Copa ninety is. That's not oh. as familiar. Yeah. So so at the time they were Kick TV, and basically they were okay. like like a multi million follower YouTube channel where they had mostly a male fan base talking about soccer. Like okay. they gave every single insight about soccer and like okay. they made it fun. A lot about European um, soccer too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so and it is an international company, so like they did have like a lot of European fans. But they came to us because they wanted to increase their female fan base and what better than to reach out to us who had like at the time ninety five percent of our following was females. Right. So um, it was amazing. We actually helped them increase their female viewership by a lot. Wow. Okay. Which was great and that was the goal of the mm -hmm. partnership but Jamie Conrad he was the US uh, he played for the US men's national team hello everyone I'm Jimmy Conrad okay. he was the like big timer at KTV and on the phone he's like do you guys want to be he so like, like casually <laughs> threw it out yeah there. do you guys want to be the correspondents for KTV during the World Cup you're gonna go for 30 days you're gonna oh go God. to every single game this, that, and the other thing, and like we put ourselves on mute. We were gonna take That's an funny. RV or take yeah. a train. Like yeah. we didn't know what we were doing. So and it all happened because one of the workers there, like one of the few females who worked there, uh -huh. like followed us in college. Like she yeah. played club soccer and like loved us. And then when they were trying to brainstorm who they would um, ask to do this, she, like she right away was like, "Soccer Rob's has to do yeah. this." Well,
was so amazing. crazy. Yeah. So when we went, that was, I think, another milestone turning, turning point for mm-hmm. us. Okay. We networked like crazy. We mm-hmm. met high people up at Nike, okay. Adidas, like all these big time brands, and yeah. like we became best friends with Brandy Chastain. Oh my God, US soccer yeah. legend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Brandy <laughs> Chastain. Is, she's one of the 1999er uh, World Cup champions, and she's the one that took her shirt off when she's, yeah, she scored the winning right. goal. Yeah. Um, and so like those connections and Mia Hamm came to our pickup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. legendary. Yeah. yeah. Oh my yeah. God, that's cool. so amazing. So like that, like, and the fact that the women won, the yeah. U.S. women team won. Like our company, it's just like yeah. I, I, I was Are you going to talk about pickup? Oh, well, oh, first I was going to say, I feel like that World Cup was the starting point of people taking women's soccer more seriously. Definitely. Even though there was the 99s and they, what they did was huge, this was like a more present day example of like badass women that mm-hmm. accomplished something great. And it just, it really it started the rise, I think, of people caring about women's soccer more. Yeah, because in what between year that, was that? That was 2015. Because okay, in well. between that time, the Women's League had. Uh, folded. folded a yeah. few times and right yes so all these women were like working other jobs trying to still play soccer and it was just crazy that they weren't getting paid what they deserved right but um so it was really cool to see like people were finally appreciating them and like everyone in the u.s who was watching it in canada so yeah it was really cool but we also got to meet like hundreds of our fans we would tweet out a location we do like a pickup game before the game okay and we met like oh, wow. hundreds That's of good. our fans yeah. in each put yeah. we had like we'd be like we didn't maybe. have goals we had like shoe boxes as goals <laughs> and we had like a crappy oh, ball no that wasn't going up no pennies and we were just like oh, 200 girls at, oh or at the God. field yeah, it's crazy. yeah it was really and cool. we were, I remember the first one I was like if 10 girls showed up I'd be so yeah. excited right now to play like small side pickup and then there'd be so many girls would be like It'd be like thirty versus thirty. Oh, oh my god! god. Yeah. It's like wow. And, and young kids, siblings, parents playing, like yeah. girls of all ages. So it was so so cool. Yeah. Oh my god, it was so much fun. And yeah. then I think that was the first time meeting our fans that we knew like what an impact we made on their lives. Yeah. Like when they were saying like we got through our season because of you. Like your videos made us laugh so hard when we were like in a you know a tough situation. Yeah, so I don't know. I feel like it's better if we just go to like a four four two. <clears throat> Goddamn wall sits. Ugh. Why don't I play tennis? Did somebody fix my hair? Hey. No. I can't go in soccer. I feel like I had like turf in or something. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing sweats. Is this real wide? Oh man. Oh man! <laughs> It really was like I think also how our um, like our mission started to evolve too because it wasn't just the humor but we really wanted to like empower and inspire all these young athletes. You're different than the average girl. Society has told you you're too strong or not feminine enough. Too rough or not tough enough. Too obsessed or not skinny enough. It's time we embrace who we are. We are leaders and sisters and daughters and friends and teammates and survivors. We are athletes. We are strong. We are beautiful in our own unique ways. It's not up to them to decide what we are. It's up to us. So, it was a really big time for us. Yeah. So when we came home, we were like, all right, Fairfield, <laughs> you did amazing things for us, but we think we're ready to move. Like, mm-hmm. we're, right. it's, it's nice, too, because it just wasn't like, we just felt good. We felt yeah. confident in our yeah. in the company, and we felt like we were finally, like, structured and had everything set in place. Mm-hmm. So we were like, let's move back home to New York and head into the city. And I don't know how many more years we could have lived at, under the same roof. <laughs> no, we could have been working and living together. Yeah, but it would have become a reality we, show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. And we were working out together, so yeah. was, Oh my god, no yeah. You guys literally had no break from each other. <laughs> no. Zero. So then you moved here, you, did you guys room together? And I know you live in Long Island, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I just moved back. Oh, okay. Sorry, I grew up. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. So she actually, Shannon moved into the city mm-hmm. a year and a half before I did. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and then I just like moved into a random sublet. 
Okay. Um, but yeah, we were working. We skipped around like to a couple different we work um, co working spaces. Okay. Um, but we finally found ourselves at a WeWork place, and they had an amazing deal for a private office. <laughs> so that's where we reside currently. Gotcha. Doing all the you work made it there. official. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so. Tell me a little bit more about after Copa 90. So post Copa 90, um, you built all these relationships um, with different people, um, at different brands, uh, while you were at the World Cup. So tell me a little bit about the relationships you built um, and the um, brands that you guys started to work with and how you started to work with them. Like, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we do this all the time. Um, I was just gonna say the World Cup like was like a good, not a practice round, but like a good for us getting used to like how to enhance going to an event for one of these bigger companies that wanted to kind of showcase what they were putting on or a new cleat that they were releasing or an activation they were having. So that was like really our first true mm -hmm. experience of like going somewhere, highlighting it, covering it on all of our social media, like getting good at being able to do that and be able to bring that to a company. So then from that point on afterwards, and everyone, all eyes were on women's soccer and it was just amazing because so much was going on. So mm -hmm. then companies were coming, like we're coming out with this new cleat. Like how how can you push this or how can you enhance our launch of that? So I feel like we just got a lot better at like being able to harness that skill down. I guess because it wasn't easy at first. Yeah, but, yeah. I feel like yeah. we were thrown into being media. Like we were never those people like you know reporters or people actually interviewing and then yeah. it kind of like evolved like we started to actually speak to the players and people wanted to watch it so we were like there's a funny story actually <laughs> <laughs> um when we were working with kick tv uh our producer handed me the mic and she was like you're gonna go interview the guy who designed this cleat and i was like what <laughs> so i didn't know what i was doing so apparently during the interview i was putting the <laughs> mic in front of his face while i was talking and then <laughs> Yeah, so it was just really We fine. need to find that footage. We, we should never find that footage. <laughs> yeah, no, that would be great. Yeah. But, but, or at the World Cup yeah. when we had the media passes and they oh, like, we have to tell like oh, story. you can go downstairs like onto the field and take your photos. We have like our, you know, basic camera and like our phone and we were trying to find the bathroom or something and we ended up um, like security kept pointing us in one direction, kept pointing us, <laughs> and then all of a sudden we're opening the door and it's the locker room for the U.S. and the national team. And he's oh like bumping behind <laughs> and it. And the security guard's like, who are you guys? What are you doing here? We're like, we had no idea we were trying to find the bathroom. <laughs> but they thought we were like on the team, which still happens, oh which is nice yeah. that we still look like we can play. Because we don't look like the traditional media. Yeah. We really don't. We yeah. show up and people are like, are you on the team? We're like, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But I think another reason like it's helpful for us is because when we go to a media day, everyone's asking the, the same questions over and over and then they see us and they recognize us from our videos and we ask different questions that yeah. our fans want to know about that like it's more entertaining for them to respond to skinny jeans not fitting shin guard hands what's your biggest soccer problem Ooh, um, you know, I can't walk in heels for the life of me, but I buy them anyway. <laughs> you, pull them up. Um, you like the challenge. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. It kind of, it's nice that it sets, a, sets us apart from the other media. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. So what did you guys learn about, like, working with Nike and, you know, Adidas and Pumas, right? Because you guys worked with both, all of those brands. Mm -hmm. um, like, what are some of the things that you've learned um, from working with them? Well, one thing that recently comes to mind is that these brands really want to keep women in sport. And that's exactly what we are trying to do. Like, okay. we want girls to stay in sport and to realize that their problems and the challenges that they face shouldn't be something that, you know, is considered a, fa a, a, a end point failure, you know? So yeah. I think, like, growing the women's game and, like, that's definitely something that they've been focusing on, and it's just really amazing that it aligns with our mission, too. So you guys talk a lot about um, growing the women's game, and maybe just for our viewers who are not as familiar with that term, can you talk a little bit about like what that means? So, Because um, I, I also know that the U.S. women's um, soccer team was folded, like you said, um, and maybe, maybe a lot of our viewers are not uh, familiar with like how much they're getting act they're actually getting paid as professional athletes. Yeah. I mean, I know because you know my sister played soccer with you guys, um, but at the same time, you know, maybe they're not as aware. So can you explain a little bit about that? Yeah, so I feel like because women in sport is not as supported in the same way that you see men's sports being supported and that it comes to sponsorships, people going to the games and filling the stands, things like that, um, it is a harder life for a girl to have a dream to be a professional athlete yeah. because it's not an, a very realistic career choice. For a female athlete because it won't pay your bills it's right. not enough to sustain yourself you're gonna have to have a side job on the side and most of the people that play in the 
uh, National Women's Soccer League are have host families that host them in their it's houses because mm -hmm. they can't afford to pay their own apartment. So yeah. the struggles like that make it feel unattainable for young girls to, to dream and want to be that when they know it may, might may not be the best life choice for them in terms of being able to live, unfortunately. So right. a lot of girls will drop out of sport just due to a lack of support, a lack of teams to go and play on, like yep. uh, not seeing in the media so much and not having those role models in front of your face. So mm -hmm. uh, because of that high dropout rate for young girls, uh, a lot of companies put that focus on keeping girls in sport and making that dream something that they can actually achieve and it'll feel the same as when a male achieves the same kind of dream, you know, and they'll be able to live off of it. So yeah, that's just been a huge, I guess, an obstacle, a big thing that's caused that pay disparity and everything. Yeah. yeah, and growing the game too, I feel like we've been doing a lot on, you know, putting out the information about where the games are, what time they are, where, where you can watch it, okay. like where you can buy tickets, like that helps the, the women's game, mm -hmm. like you're going to show the support and show, like literally give the hand, feed it to them, like you guys please like watch the game because if you're not, like th these dreams that these young girls are have in their minds like are just not going to be attainable because... Mm -hmm. It's just not going to ex exist. But I think the U.S. Women's National Team has done such an incredible job mm -hmm. showing that like dreams can come true. You can be make a lot of money playing soccer now yeah. because of all the support. Right. No, that's amazing. That's like a game changer. Yeah. Um, so, so you guys started to you know get all these partnerships with you know Nike and um, Adidas. So, what was your next step after that? What did you guys? What was the next thing for Soccer Girl Pops? I was going to say, I feel like one of the next things we did once we like felt like we had a good grounding of like our business and our e-commerce site, and as the partnerships were starting to grow, we wrote a uh, book, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess what we were talking with Fairfield University about like coming out with a survival guide for young soccer players and okay. kind of just using the way we talk on Twitter and the way we talk on Instagram and kind of putting that into book form, something that a young girl could relate to but still get good advice and kind of learn from the mistakes that we made along the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, writing was hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's not our, writing uh, a book is not easy. Yeah, it's not our, uh, <laughs> um, our our number one skill on the top of the list to write, but it was it was good. It made us sit down and like think about the female athlete as a whole, and I think it was a huge yeah. part of us growing because now we really to present day really try to focus on female athlete as a whole, like from mentality to nutrition to fitness to friends and socializing and then the actual training and everything. So this book really started to kind of like broaden the way that we think about uh, the female soccer players. So. Yeah. So, how, like, also, I mean, that, that's amazing, writing a book. How did you guys get the idea to write the book? Like, where did that come from? I think just because we had so many of our followers asking us questions, like, constantly. Oh, yeah. We were getting emailed from parents or players okay. or DMs or Instagram messages, like, everything. Um, so we're like... They can, and there was a lot of repetitive questions. Like, why yeah. don't we just answer all this yes. somewhere? Yes. <laughs> and then I think yeah. we're just like, why don't we make this a book? Okay. So yeah. it kind of went from there. Yeah, it was just like extended blog writing. You know, yeah. like mm -hmm. our version of blog is always very like mm -hmm. off the cuff, like conversational, like as if we're talking to you, not trying to package something and hand it to you. So right to just do that in longer form was, yeah. was good. And it's like a do's and don'ts book. So okay, what's the name of the book? Uh, it was the survival guide. Uh, soccer no. Crabs, college <laughs> soccer survival there you guide. Go. Okay, it's okay. a tongue twister. It's, okay. it's, and it was cool. A lot of our fans, who are also very artistic, um, gave us artwork for the book. Wow. So we sent How them like little it? pieces of different chapters, and then they would like send back sketches or cartoons or drawings. Yeah, which was, like a coach yelling at yeah, a girl. Yeah, which like, was really cool. Yeah, they were so or from our videos. Yeah. So it was pretty, yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. That's super cool. So then, so getting the idea to write the book, and I understand like getting the content because you're getting the same questions and you guys know the answers. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing, but to like actually write it out, that's another thing. So like, how did you guys, like, where did you start? You know, like, <laughs> did you get a publisher? Like, did you write the book first? And we, what, what did you we do? We did it all ourselves. We, ind we independently <laughs> published it. Our university assisted us in finding us an editor, thank God, because yeah. <laughs> the grammatical errors were just so <laughs> we're terrible. We're all like, does a comma go here or no? And then we like vote on it and then two out of three, we do a comma. Um, but it was good to have an editor and someone who uh, formatted the book. Because yes. those were the two things that were definitely <laughs> beyond our reach. Um, yeah. 
so I, I, and I remember we did the like, outline first like yeah. we kind of tried to break it down by chapters and then we'd all just go in and add yeah. wherever we, we felt we like we could add it was kind of more. nice because I feel like our voice like kind of merged together yes. right <laughs> so you couldn't tell who was saying what because we kind of all have the same ideas yeah. so yeah. it worked out but you yeah. guys are like on the same wave like yeah. when you guys we finish call, each call, other's like, sandwiches I'm like is this Shannon is this yeah. and that's why everyone's always asking us like who am I emailing we're like it's all of us we're it's all right. answering we're yeah, literally all right I was, all right I, was, right I, was like, yeah. I was like wait who's responding I'm typing on the left hand yeah. keyboard Carly it reminds me of that um, the movie what is it uh, Step Brothers when he, they go in for the interview and yeah. both of them are doing it right. that's me we always yeah <laughs> Oh um, yeah. But also shout out to Google Docs because the fact <laughs> yes. that we can all be in the same document at once yes. was a game changer. Game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I love what we do with that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh so, that, so, yeah, no, that's amazing. <laughs> so you guys went from the like self-publishing and like kind of like utilizing the Fairfield Network to write this book to now you have another publisher, right? Can you tell us about that other publisher, how you even got them? Like, what's the difference between self-publishing and having this other publisher? Uh, yeah, so this is a lot of questions. They, they reached out to they us. Reached out to yeah. us. They're, they're based in Chicago, but they publish sports books. So, like, a lot of, like, professional baseball players, and I wish I could name drop, like, some of the yeah. athletes that I saw on the website. But when they want to write, like, their autobiography and things right. like that, this is the company that publishes a lot of mm-hmm. them. Um, just a lot, all, all sports-based. And they reached out to us, and they were like, Oh, we'd love to you guys to expand on this book, which yeah. we're like, great, we've got to write more now. Um, <laughs> but expand this book, and then they kind of have the the means to be able to pitch it to Barnes and Noble, so it will get in stores. Okay. And because when we wow. sold it, it's really just getting sold to our following because mm-hmm. we push it on Instagram, we push it on our own website and everything. But to be able to have mm-hmm. it live like in other areas where maybe someone who's never heard of us. Can walk up and pick up this book and be like, oh, I could. This could be helpful to me. It could be huge for us. So. Yeah. And yeah. it's it, it's not just like college survival. It's going to be for everyone. So high school girls can read it too because they have the same props, you know, yeah. soccer props <laughs> as college girls. So yeah, no, that's that's super amazing. So did you guys get any um, funding along the way? Because it sounds like you guys were kind of like just doing this on your own, mm-hmm. like, you know, kind of getting money from your t-shirt sales and then putting money back in the, like, what, what did you guys do? That's been the we've, model. We've had, like, people reach out to us who wanted to invest, but we've done it on our own since yeah. the beginning. Yeah. Really it really is really interesting that you brought it up, though, because, like, the like we own the company and the money that we were making, we were like, we have to put it back in. Mm-hmm. Right. We have to put it back in, and that's a sacrifice that you make when you're an entrepreneur, but yeah. we found a good groove where we can pay ourselves a little bit, you know, yeah. each month, and yeah. a lot of people do it differently, but, like, honestly, it's, it's, it's a sacrifice, but you make it work, especially, right. like... When you know, like, say, for example, we have the holiday season coming up. Yeah. We need the money to, to make money. We need to put yeah. buy apparel. We need to get ready, you know, right. to do the photo shoots. Right. So um, it's definitely a wild ride when it comes to that. But we did also, we didn't necessarily need the funding, but okay. we tried to, go, um, what, what is it called? We went to Davidson College's, like, pitch competition. Okay. So this was in 2014. They had an entrepreneurship business competition. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We were the only female-owned company there or, wow. or that had the idea of a company. Yeah. And um, people definitely doubted us, <laughs> and we ended up winning it, and we won $8,000. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. And that was right at the point when we were yeah. going to... We were moving either moving into that Fairfield house. Like it was a point where we it helped. We were us. all trying yeah, to yeah. grow it together and like really put into it. So it was yeah, that was yeah. a nice. It really helped nice a lot. Boost. Yeah, um, that made the twenty hour drive back really. Yeah, a lot so we drove. Travel. We packed in per car. <laughs> like we can't buy plane tickets. Wait, where was, was it? Where was oh Davidson? Okay. It was in North Carolina. Okay. But, okay. So we yeah we packed up into Toyota Camry and we just okay. went for it. And stopped at Arby's. I can <laughs> say I will never do that drive again. <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> but actually, sorry, fun fact about the competition is yeah. that we got first place because um, they asked us, they were like, oh, have yeah. you ever put a survey out to your following, and at, you know, or whatever? They asked us about, like, the engagement. Okay. And we were like, let's just prove the engagement. So we put out a survey live. This during, was not planned. Oh, wow. Yeah. So so during the competition. Could have really <laughs> poorly. Could have went badly. So you know on Twitter you yeah. can do, like, a poll where people vote, yeah. like, yes or no, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, so we put out this, a survey and we were like how does soccer girl props make you feel and we put a bunch of questions and we had over a hundred responses in like a minute like while we were pitching yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Was so they were like yeah. watching so, them like, wow. like, like oh response, which is pretty amazing. cool and I think it was like a hundred percent like 
positive. Yes, it was yeah. a question like, "Does soccer ops help you with yeah, Make you with feel more empowered?" Yeah, yeah. And, and it was a hundred percent yes, and yeah. it was like a hundred percent people wow. were going on. I don't that know was really where cool. we got the balls to try that in the middle. Of, I don't know. I, well, first off, we were horrified because you it went room by room to pitching to investors essentially and business people. So that was pretty risky move yeah. to do, but it worked. And I think in the beginning, all of our revenue was apparel, and then sponsorships became more for us. Okay. Um, another thing that we learned while we were at the fuel program was like to know our value. We were always afraid to ask for too much money because we didn't know what we were worth. Right. Um, right. So that was something that like we learned on the way, like what our value is, mm-hmm. and like right, you know, what every post means instead of just like asking for the lowest amount. Right. So that yeah, really oh, that makes sense. So did you, so you did Davidson, did you do any other competitions or any other, did you pitch anywhere else? I think we just did like a couple online, I think uh, we, grant, oh, Eileen and then the Fisher, shark. we did the Eileen Fisher grant, we didn't okay. get it though. But, but every, everything that we apply to is helpful because it makes us really think and like learn about mm-hmm. ourselves again or if anything's changed. So yeah. our business plan kept getting like better and better as we yeah. went. Yeah. Um, but we did apply to Shark Tank and we made the final round. Oh, so sorry, yeah. sorry. Thank we're just like, like pack your bags. Songs. We're like, like, don't pack them yet. We're like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah, but, oh my gosh. We're so close. Wait, that is so amazing. It was yeah. the point of like, oh, what day, what day would you be able to film with us? Like, yeah. that was the point that we were up to like this day yeah. or this day because like, you're coming to film yeah. oh my so god you guys need to, you need to do it again I know we have to do it again keep going. Yeah. Yeah. we want to go to the in-person interview we think it'll be better oh, than yeah. just like oh, on okay. paper so. oh, okay okay yeah. I gotcha you guys today have a podcast no? Yes. yes, it took us a long so time. Long. <laughs> so we tried for like two years to get this podcast going, and we got all this fancy equipment, and we couldn't do it. <laughs> but um, I guess when did we actually get it off the ground? In spring? Yes, yeah, a few yeah. months ago, right? Yeah. yeah, so we're doing like a weekly, every Friday, we have a new episode. Okay. Um, and we have different guests come on. This week, we're having the soccer pool again. So they're like two... Um, New York comedians who love soccer. Welcome to the Cooligans. We are here with Trevor Noah at NY Fest. What are yeah. you guys called? The we're Cooligans. The cooligans. So we're Cooligans. Yeah, we're instead two, of the Hooligans. <laughs> we're two stand-up oh, comics. Yeah. Do me a favor. Can you do that again? But pretend like you act, like you know who we are. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, we're here with Trevor Noah. We're the Cooligans. Obviously. That's right. The Cooligans. Everybody knows who this is. Of exactly. course. Okay. Um, and then other episodes, we're just answering advice. Same thing that we do, like on you know, in our book. We'll pick one piece of. Info. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. What have we done? Yeah, we've done like yeah. a, how to get through preseason or hell week, yeah. like fitness testing. But yeah. it's cool because it's kind of like it's all coming full circle where where we're just we're using what they want us to talk about. Right. Like we'll put a question or we'll put a topic out and let them ask the questions that they want to hear the answers to. And it's it's funny because it's like the same way it was in the beginning. They were we want these shirts. We want to feel represented by having this sort of product. So mm-hmm. it's it's been cool to listen to them and. And they really do like spark the engine of like what what we can talk about, what's going to be relevant, what do they want to hear the answers to. So it's been so cool. Their responsiveness on the podcast is amazing from them. So how, how do you like actually ask them about the topics? Like, do you do it on Twitter? Like, what do you what actually uh, what Instagram means? questions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. So the little question box that you can do on Instagram oh, okay. is just amazing. Okay, that's really. We'll good. be like, oh, we're going to be talking about like communicating with your coach on the podcast. Or, like, what kind of things? Yeah, do you want positive to- self body image, and yeah, there's okay. so many like girls who just ha- like aren't comfortable in their own bodies yeah. and like different things that they ask this questions like how can they be more positive about themselves so it was nice we just got mm-hmm. to talk about our experiences right and ways that like we've learned to be comfortable with ourselves yeah. and so. that question box is nice because there's some <laughs> privacy to it like they yeah. can ask a question and no yeah. one else can see their question except mm-hmm. us yeah so they don't have to be embarrassed by what they can just look li- the people mm-hmm. will ask li- anything like really? yeah okay. things that i'm like i can't believe this person well, I th- wants th- to talk about this person. i sometimes don't know if they know that we can see their name that who's this from yeah, <laughs> I mean, they, they'll say some funny they'll say some funny, 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 funny ridiculous things <laughs> I'm like, I want to write back and be like, hey, I see this here, but... <laughs> also, funny. what's really cool, too, is that, like, each of us are, are different. We've had our own experiences. We're from different places, like... And and we're just different in so many ways mm-hmm. and similar yeah. in so many ways, but it's cool to, like, bring your own experience and story yeah. to the podcast. And people... These girls, like, we're all different. So I feel like they can take a piece from each of us and kind of understand that, you know, like, they can embrace the unique journey that they're on because yeah. everyone has a different it's one. It's funny, even yeah. though we did that yeah. on the same team, our journey to get there was very different. Our journey mm-hmm. to be recruited was all we had all had three different experiences. We had three different playing experiences and we had three different after playing experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 
it's not like we all just pitch the same mm-hmm. piece yeah. of advice at them. Like we're always talking and giving different. We're, we surprise ourselves with yeah. <laughs> some of the advice that we give. So yeah, yeah and cool. just like our videos, like we'll have someone who be like, "I'm the most like Alana. Like I can relate to Carly because of this." So it's like just like with the podcast, I feel like yeah. there's different things that each person can relate to. But there's yeah, definitely absolutely. like a learning curve. Like if you listen to our first few episodes, <laughs> we're all like very monotone and nervous. And then yeah. like now, like last week's was so funny. Like we're yeah. all just like we're relaxed and mm-hmm. authentic. So yeah. that's good. That's good. Um, how did you guys figure out podcasting? Because it's kind of hard. Like <laughs> we just we just taught our, what did just like share? everything else. We just taught ourselves. So okay. You went through the application process of getting approved like oh, a oh, thousand yeah. times. That and maybe really like annoying. oh the picture's not a perfect square like that you logo put up so then you have to reapply again and then they wouldn't accept you because the topic you chose was not you right, have to so. send like uh, a couple of your episodes that you've done and like, okay. it's just it was a process yeah. but it, yeah. it worked and then the equipment malfunction yeah. yeah. was a whole other we, thing. Yeah. Well, well we reached out to like Shannon had reached out to a couple of people she follows on podcasting right mm-hmm. and okay. they had re- responded and mm-hmm. told her like the equipment the software pooligans had helped us um, and then also like Google really is amazing like you can find so <laughs> many <laughs> articles that it's yeah. like how to you know, podcast for dummies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I do. I definitely feel like we're living in a day where you like. There's so much information. It's really. It can be overwhelming, but it's also very helpful. Yeah. 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 So it's you, definitely trial and error. Needless to say, yeah. we had a pile of equipment this high, and now we are down to three mics yeah. and a cute little oh. input, <laughs> yeah. and it's perfect. It's it's nice. it works for us. <laughs> can you guys talk a little bit about um, like? Is this your full time job? Soccer girl props. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So freaking passion. <laughs> um, we always say like, first of all, it's amazing that we have different um, passions besides soccer. Like, yeah. like they're trainers. I have a health coach. Like we we do things on the side, but right. for the most part, like what's so amazing when you own your own company is that you can do what you love at any point of the day. Like it's not a nine to five. Like right. sit down in your desk kind of thing. And we're always working. Like we're working from home, we're working from the office, we're walking, we're texting, texting at 10 p.m., 5 a.m. Like, I have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> but like it just—that's what's so amazing about like making your own company. I just mm-hmm. feel like you. There's no rule. There's no like I don't know. Yeah. There's it, boundaries, but there's no rules. There's no boundaries. Yeah, yeah, I feel love what you're doing, but it's <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. It's yeah. not yeah. really work. And exactly. when, yeah. when like yeah. what you put into it is literally what you're gonna get out of it. It's so different. Like if I'm gonna show up somewhere and work, whether I have work my best day or my worst day, I'm still walking home with the same paycheck. And it's just so different when you have your own yeah. business because it's like, if I want to show up and be half-assed for the day, then that's what is going to happen in my company. I'm going to yeah. have right. half-assed yeah. results. So it's it's sure. really motivating when like what you put into it is what you get out of it. I think a lot of people will be like, oh, you guys are so lucky. You don't have to go to you know an office in a suit, whatever, which yeah. we are. And I'm like, like you're yeah. so lucky that you have health insurance. Yeah, but exactly. Yeah. Like, like we do, it's it's not like we just do get a paycheck. It's like what we put in is what, you know, what yeah. we get. Yeah. So like it's, it's a grind. Yeah, we definitely all grind. And yeah. like with our side hustle too, like we're up early and we get go to bed late, but like yeah. we choose to do it. So, because yeah. it's like what we love. And I feel like too, like our passion for health and fitness overlaps with our passion to empower yeah. female it athletes. Helps. And it's kind of like our self-development outside of soccer girl probs is actually affecting our company like in the most amazing way mm-hmm. and I just love that it kind of overlaps and it's always and it's so fluid and it's just it's great and I think when we talk about how we inspire girls to like keep believing in themselves as they play sports it's not just like oh I want to play on the national team because most girls are going to get there it's mm-hmm. also like I can be an entrepreneur or I can yeah. follow my dreams whether it's in soccer or not right and like you can be involved in soccer and have a, a job with that if mm-hmm. you want to just like we did so. right yeah and you guys do like a lot of work you have a lot of things going on you have your podcast you have this book you're writing and you're doing all these partnerships and you know basically being like reporters at all these different games um so do you guys have any help? Like, do you have any virtual assistants that you hire? Or anybody <laughs> at all? Or? A couple interns through the years. <laughs> the interns haven't answered our email. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they? <laughs> um, no, I was going to say, I, for the most part, we do literally everything. Okay. Like, we're the shipping department, the designers, like, everything. <laughs> but if you email us all your packages, we if say... If we did something wrong, it's not us. We'll have to check with the shipping department. <laughs> <laughs> and then we just pause, and then we answer. <laughs> and they're like, Carly, you didn't double check the size. Um, but... <laughs> there are a lot of like apps now where so for example what is it not, not um Fiverr Fiverr we oh, no. use you're talking Hey Carson Hey oh, Carson we okay. use okay. for website help okay. and it's, it's like, like really helpful yeah so 
other things that we have like waved the white flag like this is All just sorts. not for us like yeah. coding on our website or like the actual graphic art design and stuff like that that okay. will will hire outside um, it's, just, it's also like not what we're help. passionate about so if it's something yeah. that we really don't want to learn how to do and yeah. like someone okay. who's really educated and knowledgeable about it then it makes sense to mm-hmm. have outsource to do yeah. right. but so we do we like the do. design like we'll we'll kind of have an idea on the yeah. design but then we'll ask someone else to like yeah, actually Officially. do it yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we have like our go-to um like t-shirt supplier um jen your her friend jen and this girl whitney who's also a fan like they're they're artists so like they help us put the designs together and make it come to life and like mm-hmm. our photographer is also a female daphne oh, like, yeah, she's awesome. we have a whole girl gang that um we constantly like reach out to for that extra help and it, it yeah. makes everything fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So, yeah mm-hmm. um and so you guys have come a long way <laughs> Um, can you tell me a little bit about you know, the challenges you guys have faced, like any obstacles, like, you know, failures, like how have you pushed through that to get to the other side? Well, <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's just been, it's like been one giant obstacle course, I feel like, since we graduated, you know, like it's always just, there's always just the next thing like that, oh, we don't know how to do this, or we have to learn how to do this and teach ourselves for the first time, but I think the, the that biggest hurdle for us was definitely coming out of college and not having the idea of how to really truly run a business and like taxes and Mm -hmm. organization of just everything so every little one of those things has been like a hurdle but the more that we learn the better prepared we are to handle the next hurdle that that comes to us but it's like every new thing that we want to expand on like if we do learning courses and like the podcast and even filming in a different way is just it's a learning process all Mm -hmm. over again so all those little things are little little hurdles to get over but it's been it's been really cool because when you're not doing it by yourself and you have two other people to rely on, like the three of us, we know we can figure out anything eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we usually do. Yeah. It reminds me of playing soccer though. Like there's always obstacles and you're always failing and you're always tripping on yourself. <laughs> not not yourself in <laughs> but exactly. And I don't know, there I kinda crave it now. Like in the beginning it was scary, but yeah. now I'm like, let's go. Like yeah. we, we don't need it. <laughs> yeah. Know, like we actually spoke to a mentor who works at she I, used to work at Nike and she work. and we were saying to her, listen, like, do we get investors? We need help. And she was like, you can do every single thing on this list that you sent me. She was like, you don't need anyone else. Yeah, she was and very she motivated. Was, yeah, she was amazing. She's like, figure it and out. Yeah, and get it done. She's yeah. like, you guys are smarter than you think. Like, she just went off telling us. And that was, like, the motivation that we need. And yeah. it kind of, it's amazing what we can get done just by brainstorming. We think in different ways. Like, right, yeah. The way, sometimes the way I think, I can't even understand <laughs> and then they help me yeah. understand like it's yeah. just amazing when you can just open your ears and think in a different way like genius happens I feel like yeah yeah um, and I have a weird question for you guys because to me this whole thing is like genius like do you guys feel like you're your geniuses like how do you view yourselves like, do you feel like what, how do you I don't know it's a weird question but I don't right? think I don't think I don't think I am a genius <laughs> but I think that the idea is genius yeah and we always, I think that what we've made yes has become mm-hmm. sort of like genius and we always said that like we were very fortunate to kind of like fill that space because it was such a void like if you were a female athlete or especially if you were a female soccer player and like you wanted a place to go laugh or feel understood or feel like you're part of a bigger community. Yeah. Besides your own team, there wasn't really a bigger mm-hmm. one of those things. You have big companies, obviously, but they're men and women or they're multiple sports. So for us to kind of fill that niche was really awesome. We always say, like, we're so lucky we did that when we did because if yeah. not, someone else would have come in and, and provided that space for women. So right. I'm so glad that we started it when we mm-hmm. started it because... We're, you can't put us into a category. That's the thing that I kind of like about us. Yeah. Is we're not a sporting brand company. We're not just a YouTube channel. Like we're a community. So it's it's been really cool, and I'm really like proud of what we've built from that. Yeah. But genius. So maybe we are genius. <laughs> <laughs> I also think too. Like I feel like like you just said. Like we are we are so unique, and we created our job. Like we created that space. Yeah. We literally went in there, and like, and I I think. You just you can't even put it into words sometimes. Yeah. What happened that day? <laughs> um, and thank you, sh- social media, because without it, we wouldn't yeah. be anywhere. So, what do you feel that you know now that you wish you knew then? Like, what did you learn throughout this entire process? So you so started all over again. <laughs> what would you guys do differently? 
Do not wear colored underwear under your white game shirts. No. <laughs> um, no, I feel like we've learned so much. I think I've just learned that like we're capable of more than I thought we were. Uh, like yeah, in the beginning, the I was always thing. like, "Oh, we can't do this." So we're going to have to find someone else that can do this for us. Or we're going to have to find someone that can do this. Or this is too big for us. This is an idea that we want to do, but I don't know if we're capable of actually doing it. And now I feel like I've just learned like, to have the confidence in us that we can figure it out. And we always said, like, fake it till you make it. Like, yeah. we've been in situations, like, in meetings where we're like, I don't know how we got in this meeting right here, but we are, we're going to act like we belong in it right now yeah. because that's mm-hmm. what yeah. we have to do. So I've, I think I've just gotten better at, like, being able to, like, walk with that sort of confidence, I guess, or quiet confidence but like the confidence that like you belong there you can do it Mm -hmm. so what does a typical day look like for you guys like what's like your morning routine and we don't have we don't have a typical typical day (laughs) you have an atypical yes i think i mean it could we could be on the road we could be traveling we could be shipping we could be at the office we could be filming at a field tell her an office day (laughs) tell her an office day i'll tell you an office day (laughs) so an office day we come in and we're at the we work space which is amazing because we get like we have three days in the office where we like sit down and like customer emails, literally website ma- maintenance, planning anything marketing, that yeah. needs to be done yeah. that gets done there. Um, and yeah, planning for the film days and for the shipping days, that's also happening there. Okay. Conference calls, all that. And then for shipping days, Alana lives out on Long Island. Um, Shannon and I go, f- It's uh, our inventory is actually in Shannon's parents house okay so we actually go take the train out there and um sometimes when we're on the train we take conference calls yeah (laughs) oh my god yeah and then we go into her basement and we do shipping (laughs) wow where where we do like count inventory package bags like there's it's just insane do all the returns and exchanges yeah Um, we have a lot of inventory yeah it's a lot like but we have a system now yeah it's like an assembly line Shannon gets the bags I double check the sizes I pack the bag I put the promotional materials in (laughs) a lot of uh, puts the label on it and then we like have it down where it goes pretty quickly then the poor mailman has to carry it (laughs) off all the bags at Christmas it's so bad like during the holidays one time we actually had to help him because it was my dad helps him all the time yeah. <laughs> wow, really? It's that yeah. much? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but so then we take the train home, that's that. But we're always, like we said, like we're always talking. So it's like constant working, like on the phone, mm-hmm. which is great though, because you can do that anywhere. And then Fridays, we actually work from home. So, like, that is like our, like, I feel like, I don't know, I get so much like mental material then like for podcast stuff Definitely. and all emails and all that and that's yeah everyone's yeah. always like you don't work on Fridays I'm like I'm literally working more on a Friday yeah. than <laughs> the rest of the week because it's all the stuff that you like have to actually like, prepare for the fully weekend. focus yeah. on so yeah. yeah so and then weekends like we're either traveling going to we don't go to a tournament as much um but we used to like go and do in-person appearances and like okay. that was always amazing to meet our fans mm-hmm. um, but we yeah. still do we, we are do working with different yeah. camps or mm-hmm. clinics so just really quick like how did you guys get involved with like these different camps and like was it something that you guys drove or did somebody tell you like about the camps and like um invite you guys i, f- I feel like yeah. it started with tournaments at first because we used to mm-hmm. go to tournaments as like vendors to just set up a booth but female soccer players that have never heard of us before kind of see our apparel and, and maybe okay. learn about us from that way. But then as we started meeting or announcing we were going to tournaments and girls would be like, oh my God, they would come from other tournaments mm-hmm. or their other games if they were in the area, even mm-hmm. if they weren't playing, just to come and meet and like talk. What? Who drove four hours? Four Where'd four you come from? Guys, oh my gosh. So you saw them post on social and, yes. and you're like, I'm, I'm, I'm gassing it Love and it. I'm going. Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 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 what about you? Where'd you come from? Uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, drove about five hours actually. Ooh. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Solo driving. Oh <laughs> guys, these are, these are female ballers. <laughs> worth it. Super worth it. Yeah. I think that was a good starting point for the book as well because we were like, all right, people, they want to talk and they want to hear more. And I think it would kind of, there was like a switch from tournaments to like leadership camps and ID camps where mm-hmm. we could do panels and talk to girls about the process of getting recruited or how to feel more confident while like you're being scouted or how to talk with your coach. So mm-hmm. it kind of shifted, I feel like, from just like going and selling apparel to actually getting to talk with people, which was cool. Yeah, and then people started paying us to do it like talks at like uh, we went to Louisville. We did a whole oh, wow. like empowerment for, um, you know, telling girls that they could become female entrepreneurs and, and go beyond the field like we were saying like it, you can stay in the soccer space but not mm-hmm. necessarily play right um and yeah i think i 
it's kind of crazy, like, the evolution. I feel like it went from, like, fun, fun, fun to, like, oh, this is actually, like, we're helping girls with their confidence Mm -hmm. on and off the field. Like, there's so much more to it than just our funny content. Yeah, that's amazing, yeah. Um, So what would you guys say to somebody who has their own, you know, idea, like, to, you know, a young female entrepreneur or a male entrepreneur? Um, What would you say for them to kind of get their idea in motion? You know, what advice do you guys actually have? I was going to say just start. I feel like people yeah, are so <laughs> hesitant to start. Like, they feel like they have to have, like, everything assembled and ready to go and be perfectly ready. But, like, if yeah. we waited till we were ready to do everything, we'd never, we would have never done anything <laughs> because we were never ready when stuff was started us. So, yeah, I think just yeah. being your authentic self, don't try and mimic what other people are doing. Yeah. Whether it's, like, on Instagram, don't try and replicate what everyone else is doing. Do yeah. something different because that's what's going to set you apart. And right. make sure you're passionate about it because if you're not, it's probably it's not going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. That's such good Because being an entrepreneur is not easy, right? Yeah. But, you have to love what you're doing yeah. to show up and wake up and do yeah. it all in the morning. I love that. And then too, like we mentioned it before, but just really don't be afraid to ask people for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of people are like feel one. frozen. I remember in school I never rose my hand because I was like, I'm not gonna ask for help. <laughs> but like now yeah. looking back, I wish I did every Especially time. Math class. And, yeah, <laughs> we've gotten a better yeah. math score. Got a zero on a test. Oh no, she got a three. <laughs> I, it was for another time. Um, but <laughs> yeah, and like utilize the community of professors at your school because they're there for you yeah. right a lot of times they're in their offices like grading papers but they yeah. would much rather be helping a student bring out like the genius that you were saying in these in these students so yeah I think, yeah just network yeah. and put yourself out there mm-hmm. yeah i think that's great advice mm-hmm. um so thank you guys for being on the show it's, it's for so having us great, so. great stories <laughs> to listen to um you guys had a lot of fun and yeah thank you Thanks so much.